All right, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at KDE Plasma Mobile on KDE Neon on the Pine Phone. So let's get started here. Uh, this is the desktop kind of thing. You can go and add widgets like you could on the full version of KDE Plasma. Let's see if we can find something good here. Maybe let's add a search widget. Oop, it's a bit big. There we go. And then you could search for something, like discover. It's a bit weird. It defaults to all caps, but it looks like you can just toggle that here. That's lowercase. So let's let's go into discover. See if this will load, which it should. Uh, I've connected this to the internet. There we go. So that's some featured apps. You can go and look at all the apps that you can install, which are pretty much just the apps that are available for KDE Plasma, or KDE Neon, sorry. Uh, most of these aren't going to probably work on here, but maybe let's try something like Kate. Let's try installing Kate. Um, I don't know what the password on this image is. Maybe it's like Fablet? Let's see, what have we typed? Fab... Yeah? Fablet. That was the Ubuntu Touch password. I don't know if that will work here. Does not look like it. Okay, well, I don't know what the password is on this. This is just an SD card image. I haven't actually installed this. So maybe we'll try that later. And how do I get out of this? Okay. So here are the pre-installed apps. <clears throat> you have Boo-ho, boo-hoo, boo I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce it, but this is basically, from what I can gather, like a note-taking app. It allows you to put down little notes and to-dos and things like that. There we go. So you can see I've created a note called hello. Hello, you can tag it with all sorts of different colors and uh, add um, keyword tags as well favorite it, maybe. Okay, well, maybe you can't favorite it, but presumably you will be able to. You can also add links to this, and you can add what they call books. I don't know what that means, but um, maybe we could try adding one real quick. Give a title to your new book. Uh, many notes. Okay, so it's I uh, get it's like a um, kind of like in one note how you have like notebooks and then you can have notes in those notebooks. We could call this book. Oops, book. And we can create it. And there's our book. We can go in there, and we could give it chapters. I guess. <clears throat> I don't know how to create a new chapter. Um, but anyway, that, that's interesting. And then here, if you wanted to create a regular note, you just go here and then, uh, you know, tapity, 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 save, and then there's your note. <clears throat> and then over here in the hamburger menu, you can add some online accounts, which I don't have any. And if you hit add account, it takes you to the sign-in prompt for opendesktop.org. 
I don't really know what that has to do with synchronizing notes, but uh, maybe in the future you'll be able to like sync, sign into your like next cloud or something. And then that's there's a little about section here tells you about the app. You can close out of that. Uh, we already looked at Discover. Uh, next, we'll go into Index here, which is basically their file manager. It's it's a lot like um, Dolphin on the KDE, uh, like the desktop version of KDE. So you can see your home folder, and you can look through your documents and your uh, your music and, and all that fun stuff. And you can also pin things over here, see your trash, uh, look at your applications that are installed see any shared directories, uh, look at the root directory, and, and those are external SD cards over there. Um, looking down here, you can create a new folder, new file, paste something, select all, and you can also sort by these things. And I don't know what this little icon here does. You can also change how things are viewed. So like, um, you can do a grid like that, or columns, which I assume, uh, I don't know how that's different from just the regular list. It doesn't look like it's different. Well, maybe it will be different later. Anyway, so that is Index, and then there's KDE Connect, which, if you're familiar with KDE Connect, it's basically a way to connect your smartphone to your KDE desktop, so you can do things like play, pause music, or respond to text messages, or see when someone's calling you and whatnot. Uh, right now, I don't have anything paired up here. Uh, I don't really know how this app would work. I don't know whether the idea is you would pair it to a KDE desktop, or if you would pair this to an Android phone. I assume probably you'd want to pair it to a KDE desktop, but I don't know. I haven't tried it out yet. But... Uh, you know, if you're familiar with how that works, you, you kind of get it, uh, get what you could probably do with this. Continuing on, you have uh, Coco, I think is how you pronounce it, which appears to be their built-in image viewer here. Uh, the thumbnails don't appear to be working, but I have gone ahead and added some images here for us to look at. You can just swipe through like you would expect to be able to do. Took a little while for that one to load. <clears throat> Shows you the file name, and they have this little button down here that you can use to share it to your Nextcloud or Imgur, or uh, you can send it to another device or via email or Bluetooth. And if you hit the little pencils here, I don't know what that will do. Oh, you can edit it. Well, how? I don't know, it says we can edit it. I don't know what the editing tools available are. So I'll just close out of that for now. Anyway, but it's a nice little image viewer. It's pretty simple, but I don't, you know, not much uh, you can expect. These little black tiles down here, I assume if the thumbnails were working, they would show you the previews, but they don't appear to be working. As you can see here, they're, they're just all gray. Over here on this side, you can change how you want to sort things. You can do it by country, state, city, uh, time, you know, year, month, week, day, or by folder. And you can also change the thumbnail size. And then over here, these three dots uh, allow you to select all the images, deselect all of them, share all the selected images, and delete them. All right, so I think that is all for this app. Uh, moving on, we have console, which is the KDE terminal. It's pretty simple here. It uh, looks like it's pretty much just the desktop version of console. Um, we have the... Let's see if we can get that focus. There we go. We have the menu, just like you would have on the desktop up at the top, which is not super great for mobile, but probably... In general, you're not going to be using a terminal so much, so maybe it doesn't matter. But anyway, you know, we can run a command. Uh, like, for example, we could run top. Oop. Uh, oop. There we go. There is top. And you can hit Q to exit out of that. 
and type exit should close the app. There we go. So that's a console. It's a terminal. There's not really much else to look at there. Ocular is the mobile version of um, the KDE PDF viewer, basically. It's different from the Ocular on the desktop. Um, you can, I don't have any PDFs here actually to open. I should have added some of those on here. But it, in theory, if you did have a PDF, you could go over here and tap open. And that would open up, um, this looks like it's Dolphin, actually, the, the regular desktop KDE Explorer. But maybe we can open up this, this Hello TXT. Let's see. I can't tell if that worked or not. Anyway, but you could open up PDFs or like markdown files in here. Uh, you can't edit them, but you can open them. And then you can, over here, what is this? I don't know what that button does. It doesn't seem to work. I assume this is like a bookmark button, which does nothing because we don't have anything open. So that's Ocular. Over here is the address book app. Let's see if I can get this to focus a bit better. There we go. Uh, I've gone ahead and added in Uh, I've added in a contact here called John Smith. You can tap on him and it will show you all of his kind of contact information. Uh, I've added in a random number. You can write him on SMS or email him. And then to add someone, you just go down here and tap this button and you'd put in their information here and then hit confirm. Over on the sidebar, you can import your contacts. Um, probably in like vCard format or something. And then I think that's pretty much it for the contact book. You don't really need much more than that. So we'll just get out of there. And then the settings app is a more limited version of like the desktop KDE settings. You can select your Wi-Fi network. Oop which right now I'm on my phone's hotspot network thing. You can change your time and date settings. So you will turn it to use a 12 hour clock and um, get back. You can change your appearance. That includes uh, changing the theme. So for example, we could set it to oxygen. It's kind of a older K to E theme. You can change your sound settings. Let's see. I don't know. Anyway, um, you can see like about. So you can see this is running. It says Ubuntu KDE Plasma 5.18. Uh, really, this is KDE Neon, which is based on Ubuntu. So I guess that's not technically a lie. <coughs> You can change your language. Right now we're at American English. Uh, information about like the screen. Okay, well I don't know about that but uh, then you can also change your broadband settings. Uh, this is like APN stuff. And then your online accounts, like Nextcloud, I assume. Yeah, or you could connect Google or OwnCloud. And in the future, I'm sure they'll have like Nextcloud and maybe Microsoft or Facebook or whatever. All right, so that's that. You can get out of there. And then finally, we have Wave, which is the built-in music player. Let's see. I did add a couple songs on here 
but I can't get them to play for whatever reason. Also, it appears to be a bit blurred out using this theme. Maybe I'll go back and change it back to Breeze real quick. Uh, appearance, and we'll just go back to Breeze. There we go. Alright, so we will need to close this and reopen it. All right, now you can see the titles a bit better. Um, like I said, unfortunately, I'm not able to get these to actually play. I'm not sure why that is, but um, hopefully that shouldn't be too difficult to fix. Over here in the hamburger menu. Come on. There we go. Uh, it shows you like your cue, the list of songs you're playing, which you can remove them by hitting the little remove character button which is kind of a weird choice of uh, you know that's like the go back the character button but anyway so you can do that you can close this you can sort by you can sort by uh, artist and uh, album so albums that's there and over here we have artist There we go. You can okay, man. no plus sign. No plus sign doesn't want to work. Okay. Well, anyway, you can you basically you can do the standard stuff that you would do in a music app. All right. So that's those uh, pre-installed apps. Uh, we'll go over the phone app, which is just a dialer. There you go. You can look at your contacts in here. There's John Smith. Um, you can see your call history. And you can dial a number. Angelfish is the web browser. This is my website, uh, which is the last page I had it in. So that's nice. Put it uh, back there. Let me see if I can just to focus a bit better. Yep. So over here, if we hit the hamburg hamburger menu, we can create new tabs, use a private mode, bookmark pages, see our history. Uh, settings wise, we can enable disable JavaScript, change our home page, and change the search engine. By default, the search engine is DuckDuckGo. All right. Uh, over here in the three dots, uh, you can do like a control F, you can share the page, you can refresh it, add it as a bookmark, show the desktop site, and uh, hide the navigation bar. Let's try going to another website here, maybe like uh, YouTube. So, there we go. So here's YouTube. You can scroll. Oh, uh -oh. I don't know what this video is. Oh, blurry. Okay. But anyway, so you know you can scroll through it like you would normally. Let's try watching a video real quick. Maybe um. Something I've uploaded. Here's my Pine Phone Fosh video. Let's see how that plays. Okay, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at Postmarket OS. Looks like it's not important. So uh, let's, let's try going to a website. Uh, we'll go to 
All right, well, that works well enough. All right, so we'll just close out of that. Close. So DuckDuckGo is the default search engine. Come on. Choice. Uh-oh. See if it will load or not. Seems to have kind of become unresponsive here. Oh, there we go. All right. So we got that closed, and then um, we can just try the calendar app. And there we go. So you can kind of select the days. Change uh, whether you want to see the month, the tasks, or event view. Manage calendars. You can, I assume, create an event here. Or apparently create a calendar. Create a new calendar. Over here in the three dots. You can uh, see your tasks and event for today. And then if you press the blue button here, See, what does that do? Uh, okay, I'll just leave it. Let's see, what? Hmm. Okay, well, I don't really know what that does, but you know, it's a calendar app. It shows you the calendar. Uh, so that's that for the apps. You can swipe down from the top here to see quick toggles and your notifications. You can dismiss here. Come on. There we go. Um, let's try taking a screenshot. Apparently, we have taken a screenshot. I'm not going to try to find that. It looks like it put in the temp folder. Um, flashlight. I don't know if the flashlight is working. Let's see. Flashlight. Doesn't look like it. <clears throat> um, but you know, this is basically just kind of what you're used to probably. Let's see maybe what the battery life view looks like. That just takes us to the settings. Maybe they haven't implemented the battery view in the settings yet. So yeah. Anyway, well that is let's resize this. Let's see if we can add another widget just to end out the video. Uh, let's, add a, let's add a clock. There we go. Look at that. You got a clock. So um, that's, that's pretty much it. That's KDE Plasma Mobile. Um, yeah. Uh, let me, I, can't, I couldn't find a way to shut down the phone from the operating system here, so I'll just shut it down by holding... The power button here. There we go. So that is that. And uh, like the video if you enjoyed. And uh, I'll close it out here.